we are two months before the Olympics. Our coach, who has worked with Melissa and I through our whole partnership, has just decided to step away. We were presented with an option to just retreat or unite as one. I think it's really important to surround yourself with people who will push you to be better. Not just yes people, but people who want you to grow, want you to self-reflect. Who we've surrounded ourselves with, the team that we've built, the team behind the team, I think that's really what makes us strong. This is Chris, he's one of our coaches. He runs drills for us, we play against him. And he brings some nice southern hospitality. This is Alex, he's another one of our coaches. He always gives us golden nuggets of wisdom and keeps everybody in line. And he's Canadian south from Rhode Island. This is Adam, he's our stats guy. He's also married to me, so he has to be extra nice to us. This is Lee, he's our sports psych. We vent to him all the time, he keeps us sane. We've cried a lot in front of him, but he's a saint. We decided to make Adam our new head coach because it just made most sense. He knows our systems, he knows our strategies, he knows our game plans, how we function, and he's very well invested in the team being Sarah's husband, so I know that he would have our best interest at heart. Let's do one more, yeah. not serve to the middle. With a coach leaving, obviously there's a void, and we've all worked together for probably four years now. Uh, and each of us brings a, a specific skill set that we've gotten used to doing and using uh, to support the girls. They're very good under pressure. Um, you know, Sarah will will go and, and approach that and just dial right in and just like, eat it, you know? Mel will look at it and smile at it. We're very thoughtful and mindful about the periodization moving up to the Olympics, knowing that you have to be able to communicate through some of the rough patches that you go through. It's one of the things that is their biggest strength, is their willingness and desire to do that. Players win championships. Coaches don't win championships. You know what I mean? We're, we're support staff, you know, and all we can do is help guide them. We rely on each other the most. Like, there is no coach out there on the court with us. There are no other teammates. It's just us two on the court. So, at the end of the day, this is what we have to invest our time and our energy in, and making sure that we're okay. Because when we're fighting for that Olympic medal, it's us two out there. We are in Frankfurt, and um, two of Four flights done on our way to Sochi. Adam, first tournament as the head coach. Woo! How you feeling, big guy? Just you know, trying to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> All right, you guys, let me show you our view. Welcome to the Sochi bubble. I'm competing with the announcer. Center court, right from our balcony. You can see the scores. We got hammered today. Yeah, that was kind of like a, a gut punch. We finished the Sochi event in 17th, which has only happened to us twice ever. That was a new position for us. Obviously everything that's happened has affected us. Like it, it would be crazy if it didn't. You know what, we're trying to get everything out of the way before the Olympics. We have some time to rally. We have another tournament right away so we can like kind of wash our souls of this and regroup. We just want to be playing clean. We want to be playing our systems. Um, and I don't think we necessarily have done that. So hopefully Ostrava will be the opportunity for that. 
definitely the coolest venue. It's like an old steel factory. Every time the whistle blows, it's a reset. And every time you have the chance to hold the ball in your hands, it's a reset. From now until Tokyo, I need to focus on showing up every day, every day, and enjoying this journey.